I've been a supporter of Vote Blue no matter who since I really got in, interested in politics at all. But for the first time ever, I am legitimately proud of this country and I am very much looking forward to and I'm optimistic about the future of the United States of America. Hey everyone, my name is Christian Verstappen and I have a lot to say about many things. I want to talk about Kamala Harris and Tim Walz running for president. I, I mean, what a ride. What a wild ride it's been. You know, <laughs> we knew for the past couple years, for the past year at least, that it wasn't looking too good for Joe Biden. And one thing that I said uh, when I would bring up these kind of things was that I don't really like Joe Biden either. I mean, he's not terrible. He's, you know, he, he has his issues, but he's, he's done, he's, he's, he's done some, he's done a lot of good. Like, one of the best things, and it seems that Walls and Harris are going to continue. Harrison Walls, my apologies, are going to continue, are the the increasing positive union sentiment that we have had missing in this country for so long. <clears throat> you know, we had the debate. Um, we had the debate between Trump and Biden, which was just a shit show, just absolutely awful. And things looked pretty bleak. But after that, Biden finally stepped down. Not from the presidency, but, you know, stepped out of the running and officially endorsed Kamala Harris. Many people were, of course, thinking she probably would have been the one running if he did drop out. And she is. And since then, the momentum has just been incredible. She's received a flood of donations, which I'm donating um, as well weekly. And uh, I'd recommend uh, check out Act Blue and donate her as well if you in the campaign. If you support that cause, and if you can afford it, of course. I, you know, we, we had, we had the RNC, which was just crazy. I mean, the people they had there, they had like a union worker who was basically anti, well, it was very much a leopards eating face party kind of vibe, you know? where he was like in the den of the leopards kind of, and he's like, oh yeah, I'm going to talk about unions to these guys because you guys are pro-union right now. There's the head of Teamsters. Everybody disowned him for it. They had weird people at the RNC, and it was weird in general. They had Hulk Hogan come up and do his iconic shirt rip thing while he publicly endorsed Trump. No surprise that... He would. He's a racist piece of shit. And any other things? You know, it's not... It's not like... or It's not like the... Republicans were like crushing it because they were so great. It's just that the opposition wasn't that good. Optically speaking, I understand that the policies that Biden had, the things that he did as president, again, the increased positive sentiment of uni unions is incredible and very much needed. But 
you know, he hasn't been great on Israel, and we'll get to, you know, Harris's things on that in a minute. Well, I, you know, I guess he has been great to, he's been great to Israel. He hasn't been great on the, you know, Israel-Palestine, um, you know, conflict, if you will. But things are looking bleak, like I said. I think the height of it, at least in people's minds, was the assassination attempt on Trump. Now, there are people who are saying it was a publicity stunt, that it was fake, that it was whatever. I don't really believe that it was, and I don't really care if it was. That could have been, and for many people in many circumstances, would have been a turning point, especially if he died. I remember many of us thinking, myself included once again, please be anything other than a cis het, or sorry, please be a cis het white male. Please don't be a woman. Don't be anyone remotely on the left. Don't be like anything. Don't, don't, don't be trans. Don't be gay. Don't nothing, you know, be like, not because we you know we would have never heard of the end of it. But it looked bad. It looked really bad for a while. But then something incredible happened. Kamala Harris was officially running. And if you go back and look at the DNC or highlights of the DNC, or sorry, the RNC, my apologies. If you look at the RNC or highlights of it, I noticed, and you'll probably notice it too if you check it out, there were many instances in their speeches when Biden was still officially the guy where they would mention Harris. And I, I picked up on that. I, I had a feeling that they know she's likely to be running instead of him. They're preparing. They're just interjecting her name into things, but they're saying, oh, the Biden-Harris administration. When did they ever say that before? When? When have you ever heard them outwardly blame Biden-Harris for anything? No, it's always Biden. You know? Let's go Brandon, right? Never anything about Harris until it seemed possible that Biden would drop out of the race. And they knew Harris would be their next opponent, or at least had a possibility, had a understanding that it could have possibly happened. Since all of this, we've had RFK Jr., who was a spoiler candidate from the jump, drop out of the race and publicly endorse Trump, surprising nobody. We've had, like I said, an extreme flood of enthusiasm for Harris Walsh. By the way, two things I want to mention. There are a lot of weird attacks that the right has been using against Kamala Harris. One of them is like purposely mispronouncing her name, and I completely understand. I thought it was Kamala at first. You know, I think many people would. But when you hear it, Kamala, that's it. But there are people who still intentionally mispronounce her name, which is just dumb. It, it, it's it, so many of the tactics that Republicans use, and I mean, especially Trump, are literally just like school bully tactics. Oh, we're going to mispronounce your name. We're going to give them a weird nickname. We're going to do this. It's like, what are you, like, fuck, grow up. Grow up. Like, what are you fucking doing? You're a child. These people, like, I, these, I mean, these people, they do. They act like children. And in a lot of ways, it's pathetic. It's sad. It's kind of funny. But what's not funny is the Project 2025 agenda that I briefly covered on the channel well, not briefly. I mean, I went over a whole video of it, but, you know, I've, I've only talked about it once so far. But I remember saying then, and I've been saying, just not in videos, but just in general, that the Democrats need to be screaming about 2025 every chance they get. And Harris has not been silent about it. She talks about it a lot. And that's very good, because, my God... Would that project be so damaging? Just, this country will be unrecognizable 
and I know that's what the far right wants, but many people, even right-leaning conservatives or right-leaning centrists, whatever they call themselves, are subject to the issues that would occur from Project 125. It's like it wouldn't it 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 would only it's gonna hurt them too. Which is partly why there were even a lot of Republicans, again at the DNC, who were formally endorsing Harris. I have noticed a lot of people, by the way, also doing this again, weird thing to me where they're saying that they're, they're not referring to Harris by her last name. They're referring to her as just Kamala. And whether they pronounce it right or they say, you know, or they say Kamala, whatever they say, right? It, I don't know. It, it, it might be a small thing, but I, I, I don't know. I feel like it's, it's just weird why you wouldn't, you wouldn't refer to her last name when we literally have done that for every other president. And it, it feels like I don't know. I've 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 read that there are it's a common way that um you know misogynists use to talk down women by referring to them only by their first name if they're someone in power rather than their last name. And if that's the case it's really shitty. Just like I said, grow up. Like just fucking you know. I mean I get it. Like we refer to Joe as Joe sometimes, but you know Joe Biden, but hard not to the same extent a lot of these people are doing with Harris. It's just, it's just odd. I don't know. It's just odd. Not a, not necessarily a big deal. Just something I've noticed. But speaking of the DNC and speaking of her name, there was a sweet moment. I, there were legitimately so many moments during the DNC that I teared up. I I lived out. <laughs> you know, I, I I. The Democrats aren't perfect. Harris isn't perfect. Walls isn't perfect. None of them are perfect. There are things that I disagree with them on. There are things where I wish they would go further. I mean, I wish they would outright condemn Israel rather than continuing to say it has a right to defend itself. But there were so many positive moments throughout the DNC that it was, it was really beautiful. There was a moment I remember where, you know, I mentioned the name. Harris's nieces came out and did a whole bit about the right way to pronounce her name. And honestly, when I, like, get confused, it legitimately helps. Comma, la. They said, you say comma like, like you're doing a comma, like, you know, in, in, you know, writing. And then la, like, la, la, la. It's like, it was adorable. It's like, this kid, this is, this is cute. Like, it's, come on, like, it's, it's cute, you know, it's, 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 it's sweet, it's nice, it's, it's inspiring. There, there was so much of the DNC that I genuinely believe this is what America is. It was culturally and ethnically diverse, which is a positive for our country, despite what many people would have you believe. The roll call, oh my god, there was a moment where they had a roll call, and it was just beautiful. Again, I teared up. I remember I was listening, I was listening to, I think, day two or whatever, oh yeah, day two, while I was at the gym, and it, I never thought that I would hear people, like representatives from states, publicly and officially endorse a presidential candidate while um, Mr. Brightside by the Killers plays. Or lose yourself by Eminem, or like all these different things. It was like, I love this, but what is like this is amazing. And speaking of music, many, many, many people have uh, come against uh, Trump for using his using their music without getting permission. Most recently, the Foo Fighters, um, their song "Everlong" was used. One of their best songs, by the way. And, <laughs> you know, Dave Grohl or anybody else gave him permission, so 
they sued him. And they said they were going to be using the money that they won from, from the lawsuit to donate to the Harris campaign. Now, mentioning the, the campaign and the, and, the, and the people and all that, and the speeches, I think they were good for the most part. There were definitely people that were, again, I wish they would go for it, but for the most part, they were good. There is a section of people, a movement, the uncommitted movement, where it's a group of people that are essentially withholding their vote until Harris specifically says they're going to support Gaza, which, by the way, she has said that like a ceasefire needs to happen, which is more than Biden's done. So, I mean, she does support that. She does support a ceasefire. She does want to make things better in those regards. But there are groups of people who say that it's not enough. That they need more. I don't know what they're wanting exactly. We can't completely just turn around on Israel and, and condemn our ally like that. Yes, Netanyahu is a monster, but I don't think the President of the United States can actually say that. But I do just want to say to the people that are withholding your vote, I understand that's what you want to do. But I do think you're being stupid because you know, as well as anybody, that Trump isn't going to be any better on it. And you know any vote that is not for Harris is a vote for Trump. You vote third party, you throw away your vote. You don't vote at all. Okay. You just still basically gave him a vote. Like, what are you doing? Progress takes time. And I, I understand the people that think, oh, she's not going far enough. She's not doing this. She's, you know, capitulating to Netanyahu, whatever, which Netanyahu has said she's absolutely not capitulating at all. He said that she has been very, their, their meetings have been very uncooperative, which is, you know, I'd say it's a positive. But I understand the mentality of thinking that, oh, it's not enough or what have you. I get that. But progress takes time. One of the important things to note about this as well is you don't see the results of the current person in office until toward the end of their campaign or the next campaign. Sorry, uh, administration, I mean to say. Toward the end of their administration or beginning of their the next administration, whether, whether that's still their administration or not. You know, in 2008, Bi um, sorry, Biden, Obama was raked over the coals for how terrible the economy was. And yet, well, he inherited Bush's economy. He fixed it. And Trump came in and everybody said how great he did. He inherited Obama's economy. Biden came in, fixed it. At the height of a pandemic, by the way, and everybody blamed him, well, again, he inherited Trump's economy. And now, people are going to say, Harris is doing a great job, which I'm sure she will, but she's going to be inheriting Biden's economy. We'll, we'll find out in the next couple of years what Harris does, and I have no doubt that it's going to be great. They had some great moments as well at the DNC where they really focused on abortion and, and, and the freedom for people to, you know, to, to have that choice. Now, they did do some things where the people they had come out, you know, they did the whole like, oh, it was like a, a life-saving thing, or I was told I could have never had a kid again if I didn't have, you know, all these like kind of sad stories. I really do wish they would focus on the reality that People also have abortions just because they don't want to have a child yet or at all. And I'm not going to harp on this too much or get into this, but I do also hope that we can truly get um, abortion completely codified and free and all that good stuff, and that we can finally talk about and implement some type of paper abortion, something where 
the person who does the impregnating also has the ability to opt out of parenthood if the even if the um the person who's pregnant wants to keep it but i'm not getting into the specifics of that right now that's just like something that i would like to see as well but this is absolutely better than nothing it's um it's such a stark contrast to what happened with the rnc i mean these people were were, were fear-mongering over immigrants and they were using like fake not body cam but like fake camera footage of, of like actors dressed like acting as immigrants who happened to cross this camera which by the way I know the the Nazi comparisons are you know kind of played out with the with the Republicans, but you know they did do similar things with the Jews. Had people dress up as and act as if they were Jews, and do things that the population didn't like. I'm just saying, there's parallels. But uh, no, the the DNC was incredible. And I, I genuinely believe that we are, for one, I, I don't want us to get complacent. You, myself, anybody else, I don't want any of us to get complacent. Absolutely make sure you're registered to vote. Because you can become unregistered. I don't know how, but there are certain people who don't want you to vote. You know. The ones on the right, you know who they are. Um, make sure you're registered to vote. Get out and do it. Vote November. But now we don't have to say, vote blue no matter who. Now I don't have to say, oh, yeah, Biden's not great, but hey, at least he's not Trump. No, now I, I'm like, I'm legitimately looking forward to Harris. And I got to say, as far as who a first female president will be, Harris will be so much better than Clinton would have been. This is not a repeat of 2016. Harris has good energy, good charisma, good policies that Clinton didn't. You know, Clinton had that infamous, can we get them to Pokemon go to the polls? I highly doubt Harris is going to say anything like have them walk to other polls. Like, I don't think that's going to happen. And to people that are more focused on policy, which I understand and appreciate and think that's what you should be more focused on, the average person is not. She does have great policy, though. You know, she, she does want to she wants to put forth what she calls an opportunity economy, where essentially we would. One of the things is, you know, she wants to make it easier for first time home buyers. Uh, you know, she wants to do basically the opposite of everything that Trump wants. You know, one of the things that Trump wants to do that he's campaigning on right now, two of the things, two of the, two of the big things are putting a tax on imported goods, like goods from China which is going to, most of stuff we get is from China these days, so you're just going to, we're all going to be paying like horrible taxes on everything, basically. And they want to deport, what is it, like 13, no, 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 3 million immigrants. And when asked about this, J.D. Vance, the person running for vice president with Trump, had said, well, you know what, let's let's focus on the on the you know, let's let's not focus on the three million, let's focus on the first hundred thousand or so. Again, I'm paraphrasing, but something of that nature. And it's like, dude, you just want to do a mass deportation of people? What does that look like? That looks like two things. One, it looks like again, obvious comparisons to Nazis, I know, but it does look like that. It also looks like the Trail of Tears. Two horrific events that 
are some of the worst crimes against humanity that I know of. <sighs> but speaking of J.D. Vance, he and the Republicans are weird. They have shown it time and time again. There was that, even that video of Vance in a donut shop where he's, look, maybe he's on a diet, he doesn't like donuts, whatever, and they made him go to the donut shop. I don't know. But I mean, the man just asking people really like he doesn't care what they're, how long they've been working there, as if he's like trying to have a conversation but not really having a conversation, doesn't really care isn't engaging and then even says about the donuts like oh just give me like old sprinkles and you know well whatever's good what do you're you're ordering it what do you talk what do you mean whatever's good like what do you and it, you know it's not like a what do you recommend it, it it's it's like what what do you like what is this dude you know contrast that with you know with with tim walls who's like the most normal American dude there could be. A lot of people have said, and I see this myself, that he reminds them of their dad. Especially before they became, like, alt-right or whatever. My dad is more conservative, but he... I definitely see some, some of my dad in, 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 in Tim Walls. And I mean, the things they were trying to get Tim Walls for, like, what, tampon Tim? Because he put tampons in bathrooms so that people could, you know, have access to those, to those hygiene products. Did you know, by the way, that those are labeled as a luxury item and women have to, or anybody that needs tampons really, has to pay extras on it? Did, are you aware of a luxury item? In my opinion, they're just as essential as toilet paper or a toothbrush or like any of those things. But it's a lug. Or what are you? A luxury item? You know, tampons, pads, whatever. Like, I, I, but they went after him like it's a bad thing. These people, the right, are extremely weird. And Walls was actually one of the people, if not the person, that spearheaded that whole thing. And man, are Republicans hating it. You know, like I said before, mentioning the assassination attempt on Trump, for most people, that would have really boosted their numbers. It didn't boost his numbers. He's not doing well. And he seems really in cognitive decline. I mean, he always was, but he seems like he's really in his twilight years now. Again, Biden did as well. I'm not going to sugarcoat that. But... It's not looking too good. We have... I want to be clear. We are on the precipice of fascism, and we do need to fight. But I genuinely believe that with this, with everything that has happened, with everything that is happening, I genuinely believe we A, have a better shot, and B, with Harris, we really are going to be, as she's known for saying, unburdened by what has been. Which is a good line, by the way. For anybody that doesn't understand that, it's just simply the things that have happened in the past have happened, but we can move past that. We can be unburdened by the past. It's, an incre it's actually a really good line. But another really good line, and I really like that they're, they seem to be kind of running with this as their slogan, we're not going back. And that's exactly what conservatives want. They want us to go back. And if you think they're going to stop at completely making abortion illegal, oh no. They have made it pretty clear in Project 2025 especially, they're going after contraception, gay rights, sodomy laws, like not getting rid of sodomy laws, that'd be great, but enforcing sodomy laws, which of course are only really going to be, uh, be applied to gay people, obviously, even though heterosexual people absolutely commit sodomy as well, especially considering um, sodomy is also, or um, oral sex is included in sodomy as well. 
in reality, most people do sodomy. But obviously, it's only going to be used to target gay people, because of course it's going to be. You know, they want to um, completely ban uh, pornography, and not just the websites and stuff like that, although that's pretty dystopian too, and I, I literally woke up on my birthday and, and had, a, had a little exper exper experience of that, a little, a little tease of what that world looks like, because... All of the main sites, browsers, Pornhub, uh, I think like, I don't know, Team Skeet. Uh, I don't know, all, 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 the, all the mainstream ones, you know, you, you'd go to them and they, they'd have this like, we're sorry, but, you know, Congress, blah, 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 whatever, you know. But it doesn't even, and, and that was crazy. That, that started in like at the, end of, at the end of July, early August. It didn't hold for some reason. I, I, I got a VPN, which, by the way, not sponsored, but if you need a VPN for any reason, NordVPN is pretty good, from my experience. The law, I guess, got like removed. I didn't actually look into it, but the sites aren't blocked anymore. Well, I mean, they weren't blocked, but you had that little thing from uh, Cherie DeVille saying, like, you know, I didn't watch the video, but, you know, she's just saying, like, how, you know, due to laws that are being put in place, we we can't have this stuff existing right now um and if you want to change that talk to your you know congress people what you know get involved politically is essentially the message which okay great good but um anyway my point with that was you know i experienced a small piece of that and it was extremely annoying very aggravating very very dystopian. But it doesn't stop with that. We know what they consider pornography is anything that even teaches kids like sex ed and stuff. Or I'm sorry, human growth and development, as it's called. And yes, I say kids because kids do need age appropriate sex education. Like what to refer to as their body parts so that somebody can't you know, take advantage of them and they know what's going on and stuff like that. You know, things like... Sorry, I'm blanking. <laughs> I'm blanking on that. Um, I had a point. I lost it. If I remember it, I'll, I'll come back to it. I don't do these scripted or anything. I just talk because it's what I like doing. Um, <laughs> but... You know, they, they're pretty clear about the things that they want to do. They want to basically destroy Medicaid, which is insane to me, considering so much of their voter base is old. Like, they need Medicaid. What are you doing? Are they, oh, sorry, they want to cut funding for Medicaid. So yeah, basically destroy it. They want to cut funding for childcare systems and programs which is going to, or I'm sorry, decrease funding, I should say, which is going to make things harder for, for people to have and raise children. But, you know, of course, they're the pro-life uh, party, right? They're not pro-life, they're forced birthers. We know this. It's pretty bad, the things that the right wants to do, Project 2025, no matter how much Trump denies it, he is 100,000% on board. We could potentially face very, very scary times. We could potentially face very, very scary times ahead of us. But I genuinely believe we're going to be all right. I think, I, I, I really do think the majority of people are on the side of Harris Walls, and we are going to win this because we're not going back. But also, as Harris says, we need to fight because when we fight, we win. Please, please, please make sure that you are registered to vote.
please, if you are of legal age, make sure that you're registered to vote. Talk to your friends and families if you can. See if you can move people over. If you're in, I'm not going to, you don't have to do any of these things, but if you're interested, if you want to do these things, you know, if you want to, I don't know, sign up with like Progressive Victory and do phone banking or door knocking or whatever it is, do it. Do whatever compels you, whatever you feel you can and want to do to make a positive difference. And show up to the polls and vote blue in November. We got this. I think we're going to be all right. But don't get, don't get complacent. We're coming down to the wire. But we can do this. We, have, we just have to do it together. As always, these are my thoughts. Let me know what yours are in the comments down below. Follow me on social media for more. Subscribe, ring the bell to stay up to date. Leave a like if you like. And if not, I hope you find something to do like. Later, guys. Peace and love.